Microsoft has shaped the technology of our world for half a century. And whether you love them or hate them, there's no denying the impact Bill Gates has had on all of us, from the Altair to Azure. So let's cover the 11 major technologies that helped shape the Microsoft Cloud platform and what might just be the end of Azure as we know it. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a very, very, very important question. The rise of Microsoft begins in 1975 with Bill Gates and Paul Allen. And Bill had a unique vision. Well, a computer on every desk and in every home. Which he achieved. Microsoft's first official operating system was MS-DOS, launched in 1981. And it set the stage for later innovations in both desktop and server environments, which would eventually become the Azure cloud-based operating system. In 1985, Windows 1.0. How much do you think this advanced operating environment is worth? Wait, just one minute before you answer. Introduced the graphical user interface for Windows, paving the way for the future widespread adoption of the Windows OS, and ultimately contributing to the development of the Azure portal. Can you believe it? 1989, we saw the release of Microsoft Office, introducing applications like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and becoming a staple in the professional world. And Office laid the foundation for the cloud-based productivity and collaboration tools that we all use today. Now to compete with Unix and Novell Netware, Windows NT was released in 1993. It introduced built-in networking, which is the foundation of Azure's networking services like the virtual network. And that provides secure, reliable, and scalable connectivity for all of your cloud resources. Now for this most critical of technologies, we actually have to go way back to the 1960s. IBM invented the Type 1 hypervisor, which is what allows a physical host server to run virtualized computers, or VMs, inside it. And that's all running on bare metal. And if we fast forward to 1997, another company called Connectix invented the Type 2 hypervisor, which was called Virtual PC. And that let you use your Windows computer as the host and run VMs inside Windows. And the hypervisor is one of the most key cloud technologies that we'll come back to in just a minute. In February 2000, Microsoft's centralized authentication and authorization system called Active Directory launched. Its principles of identity management became the standard for what we use and know today as Entra ID. And that ensures our secure identity and access management in the cloud for everybody. Now in January 2000, Bill Gates stepped down as CEO of Microsoft and Steve Ballmer took the reins. And this is where we move into the fall of Microsoft. Now, Steve did have several major wins during his time, like Windows XP, which unified Microsoft's dual OS strategy into a single platform founded on the NT kernel, which both consumers and businesses love. It had a lot of improved security features and enhanced user experiences that all laid the ground for the cloud. Along with that, the Xbox, Windows 7, and the purchase of Skype. But then there were also things like Windows Vista, and the Zoom, and the Windows Phone. But his absolutely most greatest success of all was Microsoft launching into the cloud. Along with that, in 2002, we saw the launch of the .NET framework, where developers could create Windows apps that could use all of these new web services and which became, of course, the cornerstone for cloud-based applications. Windows Server 2003 brought significant improvements into networking, security, performance, which formed the backbone for the Azure server infrastructure. 2003 was also the year that Microsoft purchased Connectix and Virtual PC. And now that they owned virtualization technology, Microsoft could develop a... Well, let's have a pop quiz. And the correct answer is C, Hyper-V. But before we talk about that, we can't forget to mention Virtual Server 2005. And that gave Microsoft a server-based virtualization platform built on the virtual PC. And then they learned a whole lot of what to do and what not to do. In 2008, Microsoft officially released Hyper-V into the world. And that's really the foundation of how Azure does all of its VMs today. Now, Hyper-V was again a Type 1 hypervisor, 
which runs the VMs on the bare metal of the server. And that's true even when you use it inside Windows 11 today. Now Hyper-V also introduced so many key features for Azure like live migration, VM snapshots, scalability to use more of the host resources, the improved networking stack, and all of that is the basis for Azure Site Recovery, VM snapshots, VMs of all different kinds of sizes, Gen 2 VMs with security like UEFI support, trusted launch, and secure boot. Now we need to take a little tangent for a second because this is a good time to talk about the System Center Suite. And that's the foundation for Microsoft's private clouds and in a way, Azure. Starting with Virtual Machine Manager, which would run all of your Hyper-V servers and clusters together, and that taught Microsoft how to run things as a hyperscale cloud provider. Operations Manager, or SCOM, involved into the Azure Monitor, and even uses the same agent. Orchestrator would automate workflows. That would be the basis for things like logic apps and functions, as well as infrastructure as code. Data Protection Manager is literally the origins of Azure Backup. Service Manager handles change control, service delivery, and that all became Azure DevOps. And of course, Configuration Manager, which handled the operating systems, applications, patching, endpoint security, which gave us things like the Azure Image Builder and Intune. Now, all of this tech and the 35 years of learnings allowed Microsoft in 2010 to jump into the world of hyperscale cloud computing with the launch of Windows Azure. Now, there are three segments of the cloud today, and originally, Azure actually launched as Platform as a Service. And that gave developers the tools to build and deploy and manage their applications through Microsoft's global network of data centers. The first software as a service features were launched in June of 2011 with Office 365, which is the cloud-based version of the Office productivity suite, taking Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook to anyone, anywhere with an internet connection. June 2012 saw Azure kick off infrastructure as a service which gives you access to Azure's cloud infrastructure of networking, storage, and compute. And that all started the world migrating their traditional VMs and apps and workloads from their on-prem data centers into the cloud for more scalability and flexibility. However, due to the failures of things like Windows Vista and the Windows Phone and the stock performance, Steve Ballmer chose to step down as CEO in February 2014. And Satya Nadella, who led Microsoft's cloud and enterprise group, became the CEO to help make Azure the world's computer. And that really kicked off in 2014 with the migration from the Azure Service Manager model, which became eventually known as Azure Classic, to the Azure Resource Manager that we all use today. And things got even better in 2018 with the addition of the Azure Resource Graph and that provides efficient and performant resource exploration and analysis. And Azure has grown from the six regions that it started with to over 60 regions worldwide, which gives you better performance and scalability. And Azure, like all of their competitors, continued to innovate with new services like AI and machine learning, Azure Arc for hybrid and multi-cloud management, and even quantum computing with the invention recently of Microsoft's first quantum chip, but where is this all really going? And what about the thing I mentioned at the beginning, the potential end of the cloud as we know it? Well, Satya was actually on the Big G Squared podcast, linked in the video description, and he was talking about how AI agents, he thinks are gonna transform applications and potentially replace whole SaaS models and streamline all of those workflows. The approach at least we are taking is business applications exist that's probably where they'll all collapse, right, in the agent era. The business logic is all going to these agents. And these agents are going to be multi-repo CRUD. They're going to update multiple databases and all the logic will be in the AI tier, so to speak. And once the AI tier becomes the place where all the logic is, then people will start replacing the backends. Which might mean the end of things like Dynamics, or possibly intra id I mean, who knows where all this is really going, but I think in the meantime, you probably should watch this video because I can help you really elevate your cloud career 
and you can accomplish even more. So happy birthday, Microsoft, and happy learning.